content with that because eventually I found that the School of Enlightenment and I found an academy where I really was trained in mind, mind and in disciplines of the mind. And it took a long time, you know. And so I kind of, you know, I was doing my job and, and my work in medicine, but then all of my vacation time I spent, you know, at the school. And a lot of people attack me these days because, you know, they say, oh, I'm part of, you know, Rundle School of Enlightenment. It's like, okay, people, we are in a spiritual war, and Lanta has been warning about what's been going on for 40 years, you know, and has prophesied, you know, who is enslaving the earth, and, and he said 30 years ago, never take a government vaccine, you know, never take the chip, and he said, you know, viruses are created so that uh, vaccines can be administered, and so that completely, you know, opened... You're saying this 30 years ago, you're saying? Well, over 30 years ago, and this is documented in, in, in the prophecies, and so... So when people are telling me I'm a CIA agent because I've run to the school, and it's like, oh my God, people so, think the whole world. Look, I don't want to assume that anyone knows anything about what Ramtha's school of enlightenment is or who Ramtha is. Yeah. But I know what it is because I read your book. Prior to that, I would have no idea. And I think as soon as people start hearing you know, these claims of prophecies and, and seeing the future, the alarm bells go off and they go, hold on a minute, hold on, what's, what's happening here? So I'd love for you to, to explain what that is and then why um, these, why would you take that seriously? The idea is basically, you know, we're divine spiritual beings and that we, uh, everybody has abilities of knowing and of healing and, you know, this is one school that has allowed me to train in certain ways and understanding how to create reality. And so this is, I don't really care for people to take it seriously. I explained in my book that the basis of a new model of medicine is really the integration of science and spirit. And how would we do that? And in science, the closest that it takes us to a, a spiritual model, it would be quantum physics that says, you know, observation on the quantum field creates creates personal reality. They they say, hey, the physicists say this is just, you know, part of, of uh, you know, experiment and it doesn't apply to humans. But there are some enlightened experiments, uh, uh, physicists who really say, hey, consciousness is primary. You know, we live in a holographic universe and that that is what creates material reality. So if you're talking about health and healing, it would mean uh, in a model of like medicine uh, that it incorporates this idea of, okay, we are spiritual beings. What we think, what we feel is actually creating reality. Well, it creates reality in your own body. And then what, what type, of, what kind of, of science could explain that? So biophysics says, you know, we're a biophotonic light field, and this can be either harmonious which means coherent light field or incoherent, which is an inharmonious light field. And literally, it is the photonic light that is in charge of biochemical reactions. So, for example, science knows that if your retina gets hit by one photon, that can set off a cascade of 100,000 chemical reactions. So the idea is, if you are, for example, depressed or anxious or resentful, then that causes an inharmony in your body. That seems pretty logical. In, for example, molecular biology, they looked at telomere length, and that some telomeres are capping structures on the chromosomes, and they're related to to aging. So the shorter your telomeres, the faster you're, you're aging, and you can also lengthen these telomeres, meaning you have an age reversal process that you can uh, uh, use in the body if you're in to heal it. And so again, it's been shown that these negative emotions actually shorten lifespan by reducing telomere length. So it's just about that connection of understanding how do we get to a new medical paradigm that doesn't look at humans as robots, which is what, you know, now this whole transhumanist movement is trying to make us into, but into something that we truly are, which is, you know, that, that the healing part is of our mind. Yes, we need to support our body as well. Uh, and
and and so how do you understand that? And it is one way of understanding that. You know, many people have different different viewpoints. They they come from other spiritual traditions. This just happened to have been mine, and I tried to explain in my book how did I get to my